Welcome to Tutorial Video on 22.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about conditional statements within SugarCube 2.28. One of the most frequent programming actions is to compare values, comparing one value to another and then taking some action as a result of that. In SugarCube, tests to compare values can be accomplished through the if macro. This allows us to test things and then take actions. In order to test the values of variables, they must first exist. This is pretty common sense, but it's important to know that if we're working with variables, they must exist before we're working to test them. They've got to exist for us to do anything with them. When testing values, the if macro will run its contents if the result of the test is true. If not, it will not. This is important to understand about using conditional statements within SugarCube and other programming environments. We care if the expression is true or not. That is, when we're comparing values, we need to know if a value, if a variable is a certain value, if two values are equal, or other comparisons. This allows us to then act on that test. So, we care if the expression is true. If it is not true, then the if macro will not run its contents. And so this allows us to create a true or false situation where if something is true, we do it. If it's false, then we don't do it. We see here the value is 15. This is an example of running if a statement or expression in this case is true. And it'll make a little more sense when we look at the code. But we see here the first example of that. If the test is true, then it does something. And in this case, it shows us the value is 15. Often, it can be useful to have something happen if a test is true and something else to happen if it is not. This is what I was discussing in the previous passage. Using the if macro, if the expression is true, we do something. If it is false, if it is untrue, we do something else. The else macro gives us an alternative to act on that other options. So if the if macro expression is true, we do one thing, else we can do something else. And that allows us a little more flexibility for writing reactions to those tests. We do something if it's if, something else if it is using the else macro. And we see here the value is not 14. And again, when we look at the code, this will make a little more sense. But the else macro allows us that alternative to using the if macro in that case. So if we do this, else we do this. Sometimes additional testing is needed. This is where the else if macro can be useful. It provides a way to test an additional time within an if macro usage. So we can think of these as going through a series of tests. We start with the initial if macro test. If this is true, then we do something else. Then we move down to the next step if it exists. And we can use the else if macro for that additional testing. We test an initial time. Maybe we react to that. So if it's false, we do an additional test, and this is the else if macro usage. We can test an additional time. And in fact, we can put multiple ones of these within the same if macro usage expression. And we can combine these all together. So we say if this, do something, else if this, do something, else if this, do something, else if this, do something, for however long we want. But at a certain point, we may think about better organizing if we're doing it more than four or five times. There are better ways to organize that structure. But, and returning back to this topic, we use these then again as an additional test. So, let's look at all this code. Pulling up the test values, we see we're initially setting a variable to a value. Again, variables have to exist for us to use them. Then we're using an if macro here. Notice it has an initial opening and it has a closing macro usage. And as I mentioned, this right here, the value is 15, will only be run if the expression is true. So if the value of example variable is 15, and we know it is, we just set it to that, it will then run this right here. And that's what we saw in practice. So again, if macros test its expression. If the expression is true, it then run its, runs its content. So we see here the value is 15. As I mentioned, we can actually combine if macro usage with else macro usage. Do one thing if, if the expression is true, do another thing if it is false. So it allows us more flexibility. So we say if the value of example variable is 14, we say the value is 15, else the value is not 14. 
and we know in fact the value is 15 because we said it in the previous passage. And while this is worded a little confusingly, we see right here we saw the value is not 14 because this in that initial test resulted in a false. So if the value of example variable is 14, it is not, then we immediately jump to see if there's an else there is, and we run that instead. So if or else, this allows us flexibility for acting on either result as testing a single expression. Finally, as I mentioned, the else if macro allows us that even additional more testing. We can test if something is a value or test with other operators within that. We use else if to do additional testing. And then finally, it's closed with a closing if macro usage. So we open and then close. And we're using else if and else within that macro usage. So as a review, in this video, I have covered conditional statements within Sugarcube. We use those using the if macro. Within the if macro usage, we test first to see if the expression is true. If the expression is true that we're testing, we then do something. We run the contents within the opening and closing macro usage of the if macro. If we want an alternative to run within that structure, we use the else macro. So if this, else that. And that allows us that alternative to work on either result. If the expression is true, do this. If the expression is false, do this. The else if macro within that usage allows us additional testing. We can test if a variable is something or using other comparison operators, using else if within that to do additional testing. We can in fact combine all three of these together for more complex structures doing an initial test, doing an additional testing, and then if all of those fail, using the else macro as an alternative or a default to act finally on something else. Combining all of these within the conditional statements within Sugarcube using the if macro, else macro, and else if macros, all within that same structure. Thanks for watching.